Hey guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back. I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo. I see you because... Ah! I'm YouTube famous now! Available Christmas 2023, the album, Dad! Shimmy, shimmy. Yeah, hey, uh, that was kind of like a shim, shim. <laughs> Not so much a shimmy, shimmy, but a shim, shim. <laughs> shim, shimmery, shim, shimmery. What is that song? Is that from. What song is that? What movie is that from? Is that from Mary Poppins? I don't know her. <laughs> is she problematic? I don't know, Mary. Is she pro Now, Mary Cosby from the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, she is problematic. But I don't know, oh, Mary Poppins, okay? I know she got a lot in that bag. She ought to do what's in my bag, shouldn't she? Oh, my Lord, Mary Poppins, she ought to do what's in my bag. She would be. I, tomorrow, if Mary Poppins showed up on YouTube and did a what's in my bag, can you even imagine? Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord. Anyway. Um, available in Christmas 2023. <clears throat> and if he makes you feel like a million dollar bill, say it. Uh oh, uh oh, say it. Uh oh, uh oh. Today has been a uh, Whitney Houston day. I've been listening to all Whitney Houston today. <laughs> Miss her so much. I love Whitney Houston so much. Anyway, um, do I make you feel like a million dollar bill? I do. <laughs> I'm uh, probably not Manny MUA. I probably don't make him feel like a, a million dollar bill. I don't know what kind of dollar bill I make him feel like, but probably not a million dollar bill. But anyway, anyway, um, let's get into th some things, shall we? So first of all, I need to open this Diet Coke because I'm, I'm, I feel like this, <laughs> what is going on here with this pillow? Damn it, my studio is not correct. Okay, now it feels a lot better. Is my pumpkin pillow perfect? <laughs> What's going on? What is going on with this pillow back here? Girl, get situated. Have a seat. Enjoy. I don't know her either. Anyway, I gotta bring out my uh, Christmas pillows here before long. But anyway, um, what was I gonna say? There's so much stuff up on this. <sighs> <laughs> the leaf blowers came up today when they were landscaping. I asked them, I say, please. They blew it in my, my little dog, Boo Radley's face. I wasn't happy about that. I asked them, I say, please do not come up on my front porch because you just blow all this dead mulch up here. And they're like, oh, okay, we won't come up there anymore. And every single week, they keep on coming up here and they blow all the crap around. <sighs> There's my rant for the day. Anyway, um, so what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to talk about my book clubs real quick. So for those of you that don't know, I know there's a lot of people out there that think I'm just a, a manipulative, contriving person sitting on my front porch. Is somebody... Oh my lord. I thought I was getting another package. I just sit out here and just receive packages all day long. <laughs> like I'm the king of the HOA and they just bring me packages all day long, you know. It is kind of the life, I have to say. But I am going to run for the president of the HOA next year. Next true story, I am. Some things have got to change around this neighborhood, okay? Some ch some things have got to change. Like, we got to keep the pool open a little bit longer. But no true story, if you watch my vlog, you know my neighbor and I, we're going to be on the pool committee next year. So we're going to be in charge of the whole pool. So we're going to decide when it opens and when it closes and all that kind of stuff. I can't wait. But anyway, um... Because they said that we had to go by Indianapolis laws, which is that the pool opens on Memorial Day and it closes on Labor Day. But we found out that that's, that's not true. There's no truth to that whatsoever because we're a private neighborhood. They told us well, we're semi-private and semi-public, so we can we have to uh, adhere to the, the Indianapolis laws. But then we found out in the bylaws because we looked. That's not true. So we want to be on the pool committee. There is no pool committee. We're starting it, okay? We are petitioning to be the king and queen of the pool committee. And we vowed that we would go down. I go down there every day in the summer anyway. But we vowed that we would go down there every day and check on the pool. <laughs> so it's a real tough job, you know? But anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, my book clubs. My book clubs. So, for, oh my God, my favorite neighbors are always walking by when I'm sitting out here filming. You always go like that. How are you guys doing? Good. I was just talk about how I'm gonna run for the HOA uh, uh, president. I'm gonna run for the HOA president next year. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm not getting your vote. No, I was just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> well, I know it would be so much fun. I've been changing some things around this neighborhood, I can tell you that real quick. Starting with that landscaping committee manager. That's where I would start, right there. Well, they need some help. I know they need some help. They need my help. Well, get on the board next year. I'm going to get on the board next year. Do I have your vote? I'm going to talk you up. Yeah, you got my vote. Oh, two votes. I got two votes, right? Okay, hey. Same house, same house. 
Oh, same household. Is that how it works? Yeah. Oh, damn it. Okay. Well, I, I don't got to be nice to you anymore now because I got his vote. <laughs> Have a good day, you guys. Well, do you see that every other yard in the entire neighborhood is done except for mine? No, ours aren't either. Oh, there, it isn't? Okay. Well, I didn't know why they, they just stopped halfway with my leaves, but they did everybody else's, so. I know. I think they're going to come back tomorrow. They sure did blow all the crap up on my patio, though. They didn't have a problem doing all the... She's laughing because it's the truth. They do it to everybody. Have a good day, you guys. Now, I probably wouldn't include that in this video, but people on my comment sections are like, I love for Peter talking to his neighbors. This is a true story. This is how it goes, okay? But listen, I got me one vote now for president, so I'm running, okay? We're going to start campaigning right now for for HOA president and president and king and queen. Of the, see, it's different, okay? The, the pool is kind of more of like uh, like the king and queen and princes and princesses and things like that, okay? But like the HOA, it's more, you know. So I want to be president of the HOA, but uh, I can be, she can be king, I'll be queen. <laughs> I prefer that role anyway. I'll be queen of uh, the pool committee. So anyway, I was going to talk about my book clubs. For those of you that don't know, I have two book clubs, okay? I have a true crime book club called A True Crime Book Club that I run with my good Jenny Mel. Hey Mel, how are you? And um, so yeah, so I have that book club, but then I also have Peter's book club. If you want to join uh, Peter, if you want to join A True Crime Book Club, the link for the Facebook group is listed below. Now I have another book club called Peter's Book Club, okay? Now Peter's Book Club, I just announced the things over my booktube channel. So you got to watch my booktube uh, videos over there if you want to see what books I'm reading. So I got two for this month. I got a, I'm doing all cozy mysteries over there now, okay? I know, make fun of me in the comment sections about how I, I'm 51 years old and I love cozy mysteries. I do not care. I love the cozy mysteries, okay? So anyway, I picked two for this month. This month, I picked Bored to Death, okay, which is about a guy that's got to come back to Salt Lake City and run his dad's um, uh, uh, game shop, okay, because his dad is sick. And it has a lot of really great LGBTQIA plus representation. It's by C.J. Connor. It's fantastic. I loved it. I gave it four out of five stars. This, okay, and then the second book is called God... You guys are like, is this really truly Peter's life? Yes, okay? I know some of you out there think that I'm like calculating and contriving the mysteries and the drama. No, this is my life right here, okay? <laughs> and then the second book for this month, because we're starting Christmas Cozy Mysteries, is called God Rest Ye Murdered Gentlemen, and it's by Vicki Delaney, and it's the first book of six in a series of all Christmas Cozy Mysteries. So you can go over to my Peter's, uh, Peter Likes Books channel and check that out. But October's book was called Mother Daughter Murder Night, and it was kind of like, it just came out, and it was it's one of, like I guess, Reese Witherspoon's Reese's Book Club. I didn't know that when I picked it. But apparently, it is being hailed as a cozy mystery. I didn't really feel like it was a cozy mystery. It reminded me so much of like the woman in the window and all and like oh my god and those Paula Hawkins books that I so much love like the girl on the train It reminded me so much of that. I literally and y'all know okay lately It's been taking me a while to read a book. I read this book in two days two days Well listen to it on audible because a lot of people go crazy when I say I read a book and then I listen to it on audible I listened to it on audible in two days. Okay mother daughter murder night if you're looking for a, a good book It is such a great book. I just like tore right through it with my ears. I loved it so much. Okay, so let's get into this video, shall we? The, I did not know this was video was going to be all over the place. Hold on just a second. I need to pull out some lip gloss. So, here's how this video kind of came to be, right? So, I've been getting all of these, like, DMs from people being like, I feel like Colleen Ballinger's uh, return is right around the corner. And people are like, oh my god, I've, I've heard this about Colleen Ballinger and Colleen Ballinger's coming back and all that kind of stuff, right? I haven't heard no facts. I have no facts about the fact that Colleen Ballinger is coming back. But me and Dustin Daly, if you know that, uh, that drama channel... <laughs> He does not say nice things to me. Whenever, I, when we talk on the phone, he always says, what's, what's going on, y'all, bitch? That's what he says to me on the phone. I'm like, girl, you don't talk to your elders that way. But anyway, Justin Daly and I were talking on the phone last night. I have to just tell you real quick, because I was showing, sharing this with my husband last night. Because people always think that, uh, that all this drama channels, that we always talk about drama of the world, which we were a little bit last night, but we were texting each other. And uh, people always think that, 
a drama channels are always like, oh my god, we're contriving and telling this and telling that behind the scenes. So I just want to share, and um, I, <clears throat> I, I'm sure Dustin will be totally fine with me saying this, um, but he said, I made a pizza and burned the roof in my mouth, lol. And I said, because he always calls me an old bitch, I said, old bitch can't cook, lol. And he said, the pizza was good, I'm just fat and couldn't wait for it to cool. I said, you are not fat. And he goes, well, not now, but still, LMAO. And then I said, what's the name of that thermal water spray that you were talking about? And then he sent me this uh, La Roche Pousseau Thermal Spring Water that he swears by. Okay, so people want to say all the time that drama channels be talking about drama. No, girl, we were talking about burnt pizza and thermal sprays. <laughs> but when we were talking on the phone, and listen, you know, I just want to say something really quick about this. <clears throat> I talked about the payroll the other day, and I talked about the dissension within the drama community, and there have been a lot of people that I just did not get along with in the drama community. People did not like me, I did not like them, and it was just a real division. And I think the majority of us all now are civil or friendly to each other. Um, and I think, you know, because people always want to say, well, Dustin Daly did you so dirty and whatever. I just want to share this with you guys. Dustin, as well as many other people within the drama community, you know, during the accident, during my pancreatitis, Dustin was talking to my best friend, Tanya Jean, about my pancreatitis, was checking in on me. Um, Dustin was very, very helpful at that time with me. Um, you know, like, ever since I've come back, I just want to say this. Love these people or hate these people, but, you know, like, Rich Lux has sent receipts to me constantly. Paige, Christy, and I have made up a long time ago um, and had a very, very nice conversation on the phone. You know, I think, you know, People ask us back in the day, we would say things publicly, and then they say, well, why don't you handle these things behind the scenes, and then we handle things behind the scenes, and then you guys are pissed that we we make up and are friendly and civil towards each other, you know? I don't understand, like, you guys are so invested in us continuing to hate each other, right? Like, I'm not in the game to hate people. I don't want to be filled with hate in my heart. I'd rather forgive people and have mature adult conversations, and I've been able to do that, right? Does that mean that I condone everything that those people do? Absolutely not, okay? Does that mean that I like everything that they do? Absolutely not, you know? I said to Rich Lux on the phone, people are asking me to talk about you supporting Eugene Kinney. At some point, I'm probably going to need to talk about that and, and my feelings about that. And he said, girl, whatever you need to say, come out and say it. Say it on video. I don't care. He's like, that ain't gonna, that ain't gonna change our relationship. You know, and so I think like that is one piece of the involvement of the drama community is that we are able to listen to one another and things like that. So I just want to make that very, very clear. I think that people think that behind the scenes we're like, ooh, who can we take down? Who can Girl, listen, it's about it's about burnt pizzas and thermal sprays. So anyway, Dustin Daly, and I'm just being 100% honest today on this video. You know, I watched Dustin's video last night, which apparently he'd been watching my long ass videos. I know nobody been watching them hour long videos. Let alone my three hour and 18 minute, uh, my three hour and 18 minute vlog that I did the other day, which is one of the most watched vlogs that I have ever posted on that vlog to this day. I mean, like, it, it got so many views in 24 hours. I could not believe it. I was like, oh my God, everybody's watching this long ass vlog, right? So I just want to say thank you to everybody out there that watched that vlog. Um, you know, so, and, and by the way, before I get into this video, I just want to uh, address a few comments. So, hold on a second. I'm just going to randomly pick a comment out. So this is from, um, uh, this is from Devin. And Devin said, you keep, you have such a lovable personality, Peter. And I'm just literally going through. This comment was posted 15 minutes ago. You keep doing you the way you want to do it. I don't need fancy editing to enjoy your videos. You owe no explanation to Peter who just want to pick apart what they think, blah, blah, blah. You crack me up because you, uh, your mind b boobops all over the place like mine. And I completely follow your thought train. You're real. I'm in recovery and it saved my life. And those of us in recovery can tell who has truly dedicated their life to being better every day, humbling themselves and staying dedicated to their program, and I am proud of you. You inspire people that you'll never even know about. Anyways, thanks for always bringing smiles to my day. Your energy is contagious, and I just want to say, Devin, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, and then Michelle said, good evening, Peter, an hour ago. Here, let me go back to some of the older comments. Hold on a second, so I don't just pick out comments. Okay, so uh, this is from Sophie, and Sophie said, Peter, we love your channel regardless, and your six others. I know I got seven channels now. Thank you for always being authentic. Oh, I appreciate that so much, Sophie. Um, and so Michaela said this, not Michaela Nagara probably, but said this video is Peter Mongold. And I really appreciate that. Um, hold on a second. Let me pick a couple more out. Mariah said, happy to see you again. Thank you, Mariah. I really appreciate that. Um, hold on a second. Let me pick one more. Dun, dun, dun. 
Um, Julia said, Peter, I am now subscribed to all but one of your channels, I think. And I just want to say I appreciate it so much. People have been commenting lately, and this is where I do try to change and evolve. And I'm not going to not ever address comments that people bring stuff up over here or whatever that are somewhat negative or differing of opinion than mine. But, I, you know, a lot of people have said, Peter, you pay more attention to the negative comments than you do the positive comments. So I do want to give a little bit of a shout out to the people that are so supportive. Because in reality, it is 99% of... Um, the, the people that watch my videos that are extremely supportive of me, you know, and, and a lot of those people have a different opinion than I do. And that's totally fine, right? But I don't know what's happened where we can't have civil conversations or share different opinions and things like that. So I just want to say I really, really appreciate that. That is another, I think, misnomer about the, is that even the right word? I don't know. A misconception about the drama community. That is one of the things that I think that I've had conversations with about with every person I've ever had any kind of interactions with the drama community is how blessed blessed we are to get up and do what we do and that there are so many people that are so loving and kind that will be willing to watch our channels you know um I said it in my video then Dustin said it in his video I mean we were never anybody that thought we were going to blow up and have a million subscribers that was never our goal we never thought that was going to be the case we never even thought we were going to get to 100,000 subscribers so I think the fact that we're still here seven years later is testament to the fact that you guys are kind enough to keep on watching us and I just want to say I really really appreciate that so anyway Dustin made this video he it was going to be 45 minutes long, but girl, it is only 24. I don't know, maybe he had to go inside and use the toilet or something like that, but he only could make it 24. I said, he was like, I don't know what I'm going to talk about. I said, girl, people like you, just sit on video, just talk about things that are going on, talk about you moving to Florida, talk about this, talk about that. Girl, it doesn't have to be that deep. Share your opinion about a few things. He was like, what? I go, girl, I ain't going to tell you what to put in your video. You talk about what you want to talk about. I said, but it's not that hard. He goes, but every day you're making 45 minutes to an hour videos. I said, girl, I can't shut up. I can't shut up. And here I am at 16 minutes and 40 seconds and I still can't shut up. So anyway, so he tweeted something out about he'd been watching my long videos and what people like that and whatever, you know. And then he turned around and he made this video. Actually, I liked the video. I thought it was a good video, you know. And, um, but I'm somebody that loves to just watch people talk about anything, okay? About drinking water from the Walmart or whatever, which he did in his video, to spill on a little tea here and there about what's going on in the world. I like all that, okay? That's what I love. If Dustin changes his channel to that tomorrow, if we all change our channel to that tomorrow, my channel already is that. Just sitting on my front porch, right, with my dad coat. Cheers. But anyway... I'd be completely fine with that. I'm not somebody that needs the fancy editing, the jump cuts, and all that kind of stuff. I just don't need that, right? So anyway, Dustin did that video, and I was watching it, and then we talked. And Dustin said something to me to the effect of that he had been getting a lot of, like, messages from people saying that Colleen's about to make her return. And I go, well, I've gotten people that are speculating about that, but I haven't necessarily got people that, um... Uh, I haven't gotten necessarily, we were talking about it and then we were texting each other. So hold on a second. Let me see. Cause I asked him, I said, do you care if I talk about this in my video tomorrow? Oh my Lord. I'm watching RuPaul's Drag Race UK and I can't remember what her name is, but this drag queen on UK, she don't look like Jeffree Star from back in the day. I was like, oh my Lord. So I sent that to him and, um, hold on a second. Um, he said, I bet Colleen is coming back. And I said, what if she does a video of her Christmas party to show the support of her friends? And he said, could you imagine? And I said, I think she'll do something anti-apology like that. And then he said, and then I said, maybe that will be my video tomorrow. Do you care if I reference our conversation? He was like, not at all. So anyway, that was what kind of what we were talking about and whatever is like this return to Colleen Ballinger. And I think a lot of people are kind of like, what's going to happen with Colleen Ballinger, right? I have to tell you what is so interesting is that people keep on asking me to do another predictions video going forward. Well, I went back and I watched my 2019 prediction, or 2018 going into 2019 prediction video, which I didn't get anything right in that video about 2019. But what's really interesting is that my predictions are about two years late. If you go back, a lot of them are just completely off, right? But a lot of them were right. Like, for example, at the beginning, I said that um, I was going to make a video with the Psychic Twins. I never even talked to them at that point, and I ended up making a video with them. I also said that Colleen Ballinger was going to have twins. I said Rylan and Shane would get engaged, and then later I said in my other video that they would get married in Colorado, it would be small and focused on their family, and if they're f going forward, that it would be about, all, their life would be about having kids and things like that, and that Rylan's channel would end up becoming a vlogging channel. 
I also said that the beauty influencer community would vastly change. I referenced in the 2018 video that a major scandal was going to happen with a beauty influencer and it was going to have to do with ingredients or something to do with, it wasn't going to have to do with them, it was going to have to do with the makeup component and then lipstick, lipstick gate turned around and happened right after that. Um, I then said two major YouTubers will come out with a tell-all video and it'll be huge. And I also, during that, referenced that they're, they will also come out and talk about price points of sponsorships, which is interesting about that because Shane and Jeffrey came out with their tell-all series, okay? And then James and Tati did the video talking about the price point of sponsorships. Um, and then I also said there that somebody in the drama community would explode, and, and but it wouldn't be me. I said, but it won't be me, because I already knew that a long time ago. And then all this kind of stuff. And so it was kind of interesting, and then I went back and I watched my, like, other prediction videos, and, like, those predictions haven't come true, but I'm like, okay, this is really interesting, because, like, what if they do come true? <gasps> Because I said that we were going to find Atlantis. Now, I know that some people think that we've already found Atlantis, but I don't think that. So, anyway, a lot of the stuff that I said in the predictions videos is true. I don't ever claim to be no psychic or empath. People are always like, Peter, you're an empath. No, I'm not, okay? I can just read a room unlike some of these fools. So, anyway, we were talking about this Colin Ballinger thing and whatever, and I got to thinking about it. So, I started taking some notes last night about Colin Ballinger's return because a lot of people have been hitting up me in DMs. Not necessarily like with factual evidence that she's gonna return, but like speculating, or do you think this, or do you think that, right? So I've kind of been thinking about this for a while, and so I put some notes together, and um, and, and these are a couple of things, like when it will be, and what she will do, and things like that, and I really was kind of like just going with my gut. Like that's what I really always do, is like just go with my gut, and like what do I really think is gonna happen, and things like that, right? And so I was thinking about this, and, you know, this is the thing, okay, the first thing, is that at this point, with these allegations having been out for five, almost six months at this point, and I know that this is kind of a piece that we don't want to accept, but it's it's the truth, that if Colleen Ballinger were going to be pressed, have charges pressed against her, or if people were going to sue her and things like that, at this point, that would have happened, okay? Um, I think, you know, Trisha Paytas was somebody that probably could have done that. Trisha Paytas hasn't done that. I don't think Trisha Paytas will do that, okay? Um, I, the victims, I also don't think, are going to do that. And I also think that that would be, from what I've heard from attorneys that I have talked to specifically about the situation, that would be an uphill battle the whole time with not as much money as Colleen Ballinger that has enough money to fight this long fight, right? I think most of those victims wanted to get their story out. They wanted to share their story. Um, I think at this point, they're getting a lot of support, but they're also still getting a lot of negativity, and I think they just want to move on with their lives to some degree, right? I think they want to keep the story alive. I think they think that's important so that people don't forget about Colleen Ballinger, but I don't think that they want to make this their life's mission for the next 10 years. You know, most of these people are 18, 19, 21, things like that. Like, they don't want to in ruin their entire youth over what's already happened to them with Colleen Ballinger by reliving it for the next 10 years. Years, you know, and um, and so I, I think like that's important to note that she knows that there probably aren't going to be any legal implications. I think that's important to remember with James Charles when I talk about history repeating itself is that James Charles started getting cocky again on YouTube. Like, you know, he came, he went away, he came out with this Holding Myself Accountable video, like, hey, you guys, like, I just need to sit down here in front of the camera, not scripted, and talk to you guys. And he took down that video. Then after a while, a couple months had passed, nobody was pressing charges, nothing was happening. I don't know what happened. Maybe he was talking to people behind the scenes. Who knows, right? But he was getting support from his friends and from these people and stuff. So then in his second video, uh, Open Conversation, he's a little bit more cocky, right? Then we see him come out more and more and more, and it's like he forgets all this kind of stuff, and then he comes out in this article earlier in the year says, I'm not this, I'm not that, whatever. Like, he has completely changed from that very first video of holding myself accountable. I think the major reason is because he knows that no legal implications are going to happen, right? So he can now come out and he can say that, and he doesn't have anything to run from, right? Okay. I think Colleen Ballinger feels very similar to that. So I think she's waited long enough to know I mean, I think we all know she's not sitting there, you know, if she comes out and somebody and goes, hey, you guys, like, I've done deep therapy, I don't think that's going to happen, okay? I just don't. I think that's what people are expecting her to do, is to come out in a video, and maybe she will. I think that would be the right thing to do. The right thing to do, if, if Colleen Ballinger has an ounce 
of integrity and she is not as nasty a human being as I think she is today, the right thing to do would come out and make a full apology to the victims. People are like, well, she won't do that because it'll legally implicate her. If they were going to be legal implications, okay, there's enough damning evidence at this point that they would have already done it. So her making a video, they're, they're not going to push further with it, okay? A lot of them, all they want is accountability and an apology, right? So if she were going to come out and do that publicly and privately, I think that, um, and, and, and hold herself accountable and address the things and whatever and talk about being in therapy or working on herself and whatever, I think, and that, you know, like a lot of my friends have come to me and whatever, I think that that would be the right thing to do, right? I think it would be... <clears throat> I think it would be the start of the right thing to do. I think Colleen Ballinger, um, I don't know that she lives in any kind of reality where she knows what it, what is appropriate or not appropriate to be online. And for that reason, I don't know that I think that um, she, sh she should take a very long time off YouTube. I, there are a lot of people out there that are speculating that she will never come back. I think she's a little too arrogant to stay away forever, okay? I mean, she literally, within like two weeks, she was on tour, she canceled a little tour, she stopped filming videos, whatever. Like, she's not gonna stay away forever, okay? I mean, this is time she's been to like raise her kids. For her, okay, other than the horrible allegations that she's had to deal with, I mean, they were so horrible. Like, Manny feels so bad for her, right? Manny and UA feel so bad for her. Since he's never retracted that statement, I have to believe, and never addressed it, I have to believe to this day, all these months later, that Manny still feels sorry for Colleen Ballinger. Because he's never come out and addressed it otherwise, right? Like, he's never said, well, I did do my research, and now that I know better, I'm going to do better. And I don't support Colleen Ballinger, I don't feel bad for her. So, since he's never come out and said that, I have to believe, I have, based on Manny's own actions, I have to believe that as of today, November 13th of 2023, Manny still feels bad for Colleen Ballinger. I think for her, other than having to deal with all of this, right, like, I think she has been, like, enjoying time with her kids and staying at home and things like that, taking a break from having to do all this kind of stuff. The woman's worth a lot of money, okay? She would never have to make another video again, and she would be completely just fine. She's still making money on AdSense right now, okay? YouTube has not demonetized her. She is still making money on YouTube as we speak, and people are still watching her videos, okay? Um, I could probably go in right now and just pick up one of her channels on Social Blade, and I can tell you what kind of views she's getting a month. Let's just look in here and see. Hold on a second. Let's look up a Miranda Sings and see what Miranda Sings is getting a month. Okay, hold on a second. Miranda Sings is getting... Okay, so she's getting 547,000 video views a month. Okay, so Colleen Ballinger... Let's look her up and see what she's get. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pulled up some different Colleen. Um, Colleen Vlogs. Let's look up that and see what she's getting on that a month. Oh, wait. It pulled up the same thing. Oh, it can't be the same thing. 547. Oh, she's losing still subscribers like crazy. Okay. So, I mean, if she's getting 500 over her, all of her channels to like a million, a million five video views a month, I mean, she's still making really sustainable income. I know people think that that's not a lot of money on YouTube, but those numbers that you see are not accurate. Okay. Multiply them by four. So that's probably what she's making a month. She's probably making anywhere between, I mean, enough money to pay her bills, twelve and $15,000 a month. Um, and she still has all this other stuff and whatever. So, I mean, I mean, she hasn't lost all of her fans. Let's remember that, right? Okay. So, I think for her, to some degree, this has been time to take off. Do I think she's in deep therapy being like, oh my God, like, I, you know, like, explain to me, like, all this. No, I don't believe that. I just don't, right? So, then the question is, what will she do when she comes back and how will she, and how will she come back, right? Um, oh, shh. My notes. I must cuss, but I wasn't. My neighbor's outside. She's working in the yard. She loves when I talk about Colleen Ballinger. Hey, guess who I'm talking about today? <laughs> See, I knew I, I saw you come out of here, so I was like, I'm gonna talk about her favorite today. A bell flapper and a goose's ass. Yeah. <laughs> she said, My mouth is going faster than a bell flapper and a goose's ass. I don't even know what that means. If that's problematic, that's her, not me. Um, okay, so yeah, so she knows that nobody's gonna be pressing charges at this point. So with that going on, and then people, I know people are gonna be like, well, they could. If she comes out and she implicates herself in a video, it's not gonna happen, okay? It's not gonna happen. 
They don't want to have to put the money into it. Even if people are going to raise money for it, they just don't want to do it, okay? It's, it's not going to happen. Unless more people come out and talk about this, and I do think that there are probably other people out there that have never spoken about their experiences with Colleen Ballinger, but at this point, are they? Like, I don't know. Like, the victims are being so scrutinized and so criticized that I don't know that anybody wants to put themselves in that position, especially at that young age, right? So it would really have to be like a close friend of Colleen Ballinger's or somebody that really knows her to come out and say something, you know? And, um... So yeah, so anyway, and I know people are going to be like, well, Joshua David Evans in his interview with Swoop, I thought it was a great interview. Do I think that he said anything that we didn't already know about Colleen Ballinger? No, I don't think so, not really. I mean, stuff to do with their marriage and things like that, but nothing in regards to the allegations, you know? So, okay, so then here's the deal. The new form of apology in 2023 going forward, okay, is the non-apology and the making fun of the situation or referencing it and shading it and throwing it in people's faces. That's the apology of 2023. For a long time on YouTube and influencers, we saw the gray hoodie apology and crying, you know, Laura Lee will forever be famous for that apology video and things like that. This is going to stop any second. Hold on. <laughs> it was like at 29 minutes and 58 seconds, I knew it was going to stop. But anyway, um, you know, we saw these apology videos, Jacqueline Hill, Manny MUA, Laura Lee. I mean, we even saw them from Shane Dawson, but they didn't wear you know, gray hoodies. But Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star did, I think, 15 apology videos and still doesn't change. And James Charles and all these people made them apology videos. Now, Trisha Paytas, she got in a video and she apologized to the H3 like maybe two cast members and she was in full glam so she did it a little bit different she knew not to go down the route of the uh the gray hoodie right but in 2023 the new apology is not the gray hoodie apology i have ruined my life i am so sorry i ruined your lives let me take full responsibility for it and leave youtube for six months that's not the new that's not the apology of 2023 the new apology is the form of a non-apology okay which means wait enough time and then come back and shove it in people's face that you don't think you did anything wrong. And we can thank Michaela Nagara for that, okay? Michaela Nagara, at the beginning of the year, I think it was in like February, March or whatever, when uh, Mascara Gate happened, she's really the one that we can thank for that, okay? Because Michaela Nagara had this huge following. Then she did this allegedly uh, fake review of this mascara, right? And then everybody called her out. And she never addressed it. And then she came back and she said something like, we need, we're all here to address the elephant in the room. And she shaded it and she made fun of it. And she's made fun of it several times since. Her, her TikTok has continued to grow. She's continued to get sponsorships. Now she has a collaboration coming out with KBD Beauty. Um... So it's not like her career has suffered at all by her not addressing it. And people literally were like, she cannot be trusted. She's a liar. I just addressed this in my video the other day. She's still getting a huge fo following. She's still making tons and tons of money. I mean, she had a sponsored wedding, okay? So what she proved was you can come out and take no accountability, not address the situation, and continue to act like you don't really give a shit, and people will continue to follow you. In 2023... People have proven that you don't have to have any integrity to have any kind of platform. In fact, and I think this is because people have been holding people accountable for so long that pendulums kind of just switched the other way and people are like, I'm so tired of this, blah, 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 whatever. Why do we care? Just let people do what people want to do. Let them say whatever they, there's been so many cancellations at this point that people are like, oh my God, just let people say what they want to say. I'm so tired of it. It's, it's too much at this point. I can't handle it anymore, blah, 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 blah. I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna unfollow somebody over a bad review of mass but then they forget all the other things that she's lied about and whatever, right? And other people have proven this as well, you know? Other people have proven that they can come back and they can not ever take accountability and they can have, you know, I mean, James Charles took his Holding Myself Accountability video out and just launched an entire brand. And major makeup influencers are reviewing it and supporting it, you know? And uh, major celebrities allegedly are wearing that makeup and their makeup artists are putting that on their face. And he's making a lot of money off of that. And this is somebody that is a self-proclaimed predator. We're not talking about a review of mascara. We're talking about a self-proclaimed predator and is able to thrive in the industry, okay? So, Colleen Ballinger, and I don't think she's a stupid woman. I think she made stupid choices, okay? And I think that she... I don't even think it's stupid choices. I think her emotional development is so lacking that she thought what she was doing was okay and she was so ate up with herself that she thought it was okay and it's just, it's baffling to me that she ever thought that. 
But she's watched this, okay? She's watched that people can come out and they don't have to take any accountability. So what will she do? She'll come out and she took no accountability for it, right? Now, what I'm hoping for is I hope she does sit down as a beginning and I hope she makes this video apologizing to the victims, apologizing to her fans, apologizing, which all the fans will be like, oh, Colleen, you don't need to apologize to me. Oh, Colleen, I stand you forever. Oh, Colleen, you don't need to do anything. Oh, Colleen, when are you going back on tour? Oh, Colleen, you don't need to do any of this kind of stuff, right? But she needs to do that for the victims and the victims' families and their friends, okay? She owes that to them privately and publicly. And then just say, and I think it's time that I take a long hiatus off of YouTube. And she already has, but announce it publicly and say, I'm taking the next two years off of YouTube. And I don't know that I'm going to be coming back after that. I'll have to reevaluate things at that time. And also let people know what her plan is. And during that time, I'm going to be in therapy twice a week. Because I really do struggle with thinking there's anything wrong about that. I think... You know, these are people that have abused their platforms and hurt people with their platforms. I, so, I think, and, and I also think that, and this was in one of my prediction videos, and this was talking about, you know, the, the food chat channels and James Charles and Colleen Ballinger. I think that people, what people do off YouTube, they will start being held accountable on YouTube. I also think that there will be people that will continue to be able to have YouTube channels, but if their channels are about, you know, eating huge amounts of food or hurting themselves and things like that, um, I, you know, by not taking care of themselves and whatever. I think those videos, I think there's going to be some kind of advisory board put into place. I think YouTube's going to be forced to do that. I think, and I hope it's not as a result of something tragic happening. I really do. Um, I, I really don't because I don't want that to happen to force YouTube's hand. YouTube needs, I mean, if YouTube waits until something tragic happens with a YouTuber that has been making videos for a very long time, monetizing over harming themselves, and then after that happens, they put in this policy into place, it's a little too little too late, and I think YouTube will take a major hit for that, okay? I think that YouTube needs to come out ahead of time and put some advisory board into place, or if you're gonna do these, my battery stopped, I need to go inside and get another battery. Hells bells. Anyway, what I was saying was, I was talking about policies being put into place on YouTube and things like that. But anyway, getting back to the whole Colleen Ballinger thing, like, I think if Colleen Ballinger would come out with that video addressing the victims, their families, and their friends, and her audience, and things like that, I don't think that's the end all. I think that would be the beginning. I think following that, she needs to take a long hiatus off of YouTube. Maybe never come back to YouTube. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, like... It's just extremely problematic. I mean, she's abused She's abused her platform to hurt people. I, I think that's a problem, you know? So anyway, I wanted to say that. So the non-apology is a new apology, right? Like, that's what people do, is that they make fun of it and whatever. And, you know, uh, we saw that with the ukule ukulele video. And that did not fare well for Colleen. I mean, we know that. Everybody made a joke of that. But here's the thing. Like, let's just think about this for a second, okay? Colleen has taken a huge hit. But Colleen did that ukulele video and then never spoke again, okay? So that ukulele video really spoke to its, it, itself. Like, it, it, people saw that as, like, the last word that Colleen Ballinger ever said in this situation. We haven't heard her say anything else since that situation. So if you want to go back and see what Colleen Ballinger thinks about this situation November 13th of 2023, you go back and you watch a ukulele video, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's not an apology video. It's her being pissed that she even has to address it is what it is and making a joke about it. But here's the thing, and I believe this as somebody that has followed and done, you know, all this stuff for seven years, right? Had Colleen Ballinger turned around two weeks later and, and just continued to upload videos like she was doing before and not addressed a ukulele video, over time people would have continued to follow her. People would have continued to watch her. Yes, yeah, she would have gotten a huge backlash off of it, okay? But I still get comments on my videos, on my little small channel. I still get comments from people that are like, I love Colleen. I don't think she did anything wrong. I will stand by her forever. I'm a huge fan of Colleen's. So there are people out there that will continue to follow her. Colleen knows that. If Colleen had kept it running, if she had kept the train going... Toot, toot. Um, if she had kept that uh, that gossip train going and she just kept on posting videos and videos and videos and things like that, at some point, um, and the victims, like nothing else came out and they didn't press charges or anything like that, at some point, people she would have gained her following again. She would have been getting views on her video. For a long time, sure, she's going to get major nastiness on her videos, a lot of backlash. Of course she's going to get that, right? But if she had done that and she had kept on posting videos, 
you know, every week, every two weeks for a while and just act, acted like, I don't even know what you guys are talking about, but I'm going to start posting videos again, like James Charles eventually did, like Shane Dawson eventually did, and just stopped talking about what had happened, um, then she would have a platform again. I think, you know, what's important to remember is that James Charles did come back and he did start posting videos again. He addressed it a little bit at the beginning and then he stopped addressing it completely, right? Because what he realized was those that hate me are going to hate me and those that don't aren't and I'm going to continue to grow and I'm going to continue to gain subscribers and he has. And so he stopped addressing it and he just went on and continued to do what he was doing, right? And collabing with people that would collab with him and showing that, that people were using his makeup and doing TikTok challenges and all that kind of stuff and he continued to grow. I think Colleen Ballinger... I think she's probably watching James very closely and how he's handled the situation, and I think she'll do things similarly, right? So it'll be up to the people that have watched her for a long time and the people that are disgruntled with her or not happy with her, depending on what happens with her career. Do I think she'll get the views that she got before? No. So I think that's what will happen. Um... But, you know, the Die Hard fans are looking for a reason to excuse what happened. They're looking for a reason to think that she didn't do anything wrong. They're looking for a reason to fall in love with Colleen Ballinger again. If Colleen Ballinger comes out and doesn't address it and continues just to post again, the comments will be, this is the Colleen that I love. Colleen, I stand you. Colleen, I know that you've gone through a really hard time. Colleen, I'm really sorry this happened to you. I will never leave your channel. They're looking for an excuse to, to to forget everything that happened and to fall in love with Colleen Ballinger. In fact, a lot of people that have probably unfollowed Colleen Ballinger are looking for a reason to fall in love with her again and will resubscribe to her, sadly, if she starts posting content on a regular basis again. Colleen will get backlash, but the longer she posts and the more people that will watch and return, and then they will forget what she did. And this is her plan. And this is why it's important to continue to talk about it. Because two to three years down the road, she'll be posting like everything. And then there'll be some new huge thing that has come out about somebody else. And everybody will for have forgotten what Colleen Ballinger did. And this is why it's important to continue to hold these people accountable. So what might she do? Well, I think she's going to post one video before the end of the year. Okay? I don't... And people will be like, oh, this is for AdSense. Colleen Ballinger don't care about AdSense, okay? She don't care about all that kind of stuff. I mean, she does, I think, in the grand scheme of things, but her returning won't be about the AdSense money. She don't care about that. She might even not monetize the video. I don't know, right? But it will be one video that she does to go into 2024 to show that I'm back and I'm going to start posting videos again in 2024. I really, if she doesn't come back in 2023, we might not see Colleen Ballinger for a very long time. My gut tells me she's going to make one more video before the end of the year. And I think the video will not be what we expect. I'm like really hoping that Colleen Ballinger has the decency as a human being, which I have lost all hope in her in this, but I'm really hoping that she has the ability to be a decent human being and sit down on video and take some of the pain away from these victims that they have had to go through by her actions and by reliving this trauma. I hope that she is able to do that, right? I think not only her actions have proven to most of us who she really is as a person or as a person as a human being and how she treats people on and off of camera but I also think that her inaction has shown us who she really is and I don't really want to know what the excuses are that people want to give well she can't because of this or she can't because of that blah 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 whatever there comes a time when you have to do the right thing okay there's a time when you have to come out and you have to do the right thing you know, I have shared this for a long time that I have friends of mine in recovery that have been sober for two, three, five years and they got drug charges before they got sober. They still have to go to prison afterwards and serve those sentences, right? That doesn't take away their recovery. That doesn't mean that they stop working programs when they're in prison. That doesn't mean that they go back to using when they get out of prison, you know, hopefully. But I've had friends of mine that have been sober a year, two years, whatever, and have to go to prison for a while because of drug charges that they got when they were using, and they stay sober in prison, and they get out, and they continue this sobriety journey, you know? So I don't really want to know what the excuses are of Colleen Ballinger. If she's really that good of a person, then her inaction would not exist, okay? She would have come out by now and done, or at least started to do what the right thing to do was. I'm going to tell you right now, you guys want to talk about the Dramageddon, the biggest Dramageddon ever. I don't know why I feel this way, but I feel like she's going to pull some real shady ass move and she's going to film like a Christmas party. Like this is what I said to Dustin last night. I don't know why this just came out of nowhere last night when I was talking to him on the phone or texting him on the phone. Like she's going to do a Christmas party and film the whole thing with Jojo and all of her other Joey and all these other people being there and expose everybody that's supporting her. I, 
it's gonna be something like that, or her just like, it'll be like a, I, I, if she does something like that, and says we are all standing together and F you to everybody that's ever come for me, she will take down herself and all of those people, okay? All of those people. She'll take them all down, too. And that will show that she doesn't even care about her her closest comrades. But what I really think that she'll do is she'll come out with a video where it's like pieces of vlogs that she's put together for the last couple months to really let people know. I've continued to vlog for the last couple months. This hasn't stopped me. You know, let me show you my kids. and Let me show you what home improvements I've done around the house. And I went here and I went there. It'll be something very simple. You know, and she'll make some comment at the very end of it. Like, you know, this has been a long year and this is the end of 2023 and going into 2024. It's a new year and I can't wait to be back with you guys again. It'll be something like that, I think. And she'll completely ignore everything that happened. That's what I really think that she'll do. But I think she'll put out one more video before the end of 2023. And I think she's watching drama commentary channels, the victim stories. I think she's watching all that very closely to um, know what to say when she does come out. So, Colleen, I know you're watching this. <laughs> I know Colleen watches all the drama commentary videos. I've known that for a while. Um, I know that they all do. The, all those people, are they're so ate up with themselves, they watch all these videos. So, Colleen, it'd be interesting to see what you do doing going forward. I hope that you choose to begin to do the right thing and give the victims some time to move on with their lives and heal. Um, that's the right thing to do. And, and I hope that you do that. I hope that for the victims. And, um, you know, I feel like they, they deserve it at this point. You know, it just, the whole situation is just like baffling to me. You know, I was looking at like my bingo card for 2023. And I can tell you right now, this was one thing that I never, never expected. And I, and I said that I was going to continue to talk about this every month. So here's my November video on Colleen Ballinger. I never in a million years would have ever expected for this to come out. And the, the scariest thing of all, I think, when you want to talk about parasocial relationships and fandoms and things like that, right? That Adam McIntyre came out with his story years ago. Nobody believed him. She was working overtime behind the scenes to discredit Adam McIntyre and, like, really give him a bad reputation, right? Other than that, nobody really came out at that time and spoke about it, okay? We're now flash forward a couple years later. A lot of people have come out and spoke about it. The scary thing is that Colleen Ballinger has a lot of friends on YouTube. She's done a lot of collaborations with many people. They've cross-pollinated and helped build each other's careers. She has a fandom that she was interacting with personally. She had many, many people behind the scenes that she was talking to. She had an ex-husband that knew about things. She had family that knows about things. All of these people knew about things, right? And nobody spoke about it until this year. That's pretty scary that Colleen Ballinger was able to keep all this under wraps. That's probably the scariest thing of all about all of this, you know? And the fear that the victims had in coming out and talking about this because then their reputations would be ruined, nobody would believe them, and they would have to relive through this traumatic experience again with nobody believing them. At what expense? Brave souls. Anyway, let me know what you think that Colleen Ballinger is going to do. What do you think her next move is going to be in the comment section below? I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.